Okay, so at this point, I've brought the wing in. I've overlapped it with the back. That's cost me some things that I like. And I'm not sure yet that this is resolved fully. It's, it's not, but I'm going to show you some tricks next, next class, how we can use clone stamp and kind of bring a little bit more of that red in, make it more believable. So for now, what I'm going to do is add the other major components. And so at this point, I can have my sketch turned off, but I can have it open in preview off to the side, much like we did with our landscape sketch. And it will show me the other components I might be missing. So I need a possum tail and I need talons, right? And if possible, bear claws at the tips of the wings. So there's other things I might add in. I just want to roughly put those in. So that's open if I need to reference it. So first let's do the tail. And I was thinking a possum tail, like that was decent, but it's a little blurry. This one was really sharp focused, but just a really dead looking tail. <laughs> And then this one was a nice kind of in-between. And I, I kind of like the color and the fur on it. So let's bring that one in. That's why I say get more reference than you need because you, you never know how your creature is actually going to come together. Hmm, that's not why I keep doing that. Let me see. Back to my tail layer. Form it. And now, since I'm pretty committed to to the skeletal structure that I've built here with my reference, which is based on my sketch, but might have to be a little different than my sketch, I am not trying to match my sketch as completely anymore. And I, I want the silhouette to be interesting overall. Let's see, that's going to be a little too, too strong. Let's go to a lower tolerance. I think that will work for the most part. And then I'm going to use my lasso and tell it not to get the interior here too much. Oh, glitch. Now, how do I soften that edge? I select the empty space and then do the select mask. Okay. Come on. Where did my selector mask go? Select here, select and mask. There we go. Delete it, softens it. But it will still look like fur. And then same thing for this part. And just go in with my lasso. Once I get kind of close to the fur, some reference is just harder to select than others. I'm holding down shift and using this low tolerance contiguous lasso. Give me some variation and now I'll just use shift to add in all this to delete. Then I'm going to select and mask to soften it. All right. Let's play with levels quick. I 
curves is actually a really great tool, but it, it's, it doesn't make as much intuitive sense as levels. It's going to limit the highlight a little bit. But I like that color change. <coughs> so I think this tail is useful. And it carries that, that texture of the fur through as well. And now I need the talons. Now I could play, by the way, I could play with the tail, play to warp it, and try to actually make it match my pose. But experience tells me that that's not always a great idea because it needs to feel like a natural curve coming off of the spine. And so you can try kind of forcing your own angle, but sometimes just leaving it the way you found it is going to be the best option. And I like the silhouette that makes. And that's why I'm not being a slave to my sketch as much anymore. Okay, so last thing, the talons. Cool. So I'm thinking yellow ones aren't what I want anymore. So I'm actually not going to go to my preferred ones up here. I'm going to go to these, which are white, because I want that contrast. I'm going to select them out. It's got a nice dead creature in its talons. Lovely. fun to make things that look dangerous. Now this is not the easiest reference because it's not the easiest to cut out or use, but if you think it's the best, then you it's worth putting the work in. So I'm going to move this up above my waist layer, down below my chest layer. Right, so right there. And I think it also has the spacing that I like. but I might need to distort it a little bit just to get the perspective on the body right. Then I might hug them into the fur a little bit. All right, so that's working pretty well. Now I need to do some erasing. Get rid of the hard edges at 100%. Since this is a little bit more delicate, I'm gonna shrink my brush a little. First, get rid of these hard edges. I gave myself overlap. The hard edges are always a telltale. You do not want them. And now I can go a little lower opacity and I can start kind of feathering in the fur. Don't want to erase too much away because I want the contrast of the legs to still be there. Now let's see if I can use magic wand to help me out here. It's probably, oh, no, I got lucky. I was going to say it's probably too close to the white. But it's good reference, nice sharp edge. Use what you can. Then I'm going to select around it to soften those sharp edges. Magic wand. <coughs> to collect and mask. Delete, delete. There we go. That's more believable. And now we get in for the close eraser work. Ah, beautiful. So I'm going to use the eraser at 100% opacity. This time about 80% hardness. 
a smaller size using my tablet pressure sensitive to size so I can really cut this out. Why am I not doing 100% hardness? Well, because I want to feather the pixels just slightly, just like I do with the refine edge. But I don't want to leave any kind of band around them. So when it prints on white, I don't want it to look like there's an outline left. Now I can get the same effect by using my lasso and then refining the edge and softening it slightly. But it's nice to get in there and just do it by hand as well. And that middle gray really just shows up and lets you know what the background's doing. And this is some of the finishing work we'll do at the beginning of next class, cleaning around the, the outside edges of our creature. Remember, we want something that shows head to toe. I want to show their claws, the claws of this creature empty. So that makes it so some of this material needs to be burned, you know, to look like that's claw instead of lizard. It's a nice little lizard pelt that this thing has got. Same thing for the underside of the talons here. I have to kind of make up the shape of it. At least for the time being, I can use other reference to help. But again, this is just more transformation and customization of it. Like I can shorten that back talon, cut into it, and then just cut around this one. So by using the stylus, this Wacom bamboo, bamboo tablet, very inexpensive, wired tablet and stylus, I am not filling my whole brush circle each time I click like I would with the mouse. Instead, based on how hard I push, I get to determine how big the circle is that gets affected. Now this has its ultimate form and need when we do digital painting. But just as an eraser here, the tablet and stylus are very, they'll save you a lot of time to give you a better sensitivity. Uh, other side. So if you can just get your edges clean, like I'm doing here, then I can just use my lasso and clear out the rest. So I'm giving myself a little channel in which, a little trench basically, in which to uh, run my lasso selection to. Giving me some space between the edge I wanna keep and all the stuff I wanna delete. feel the intensity in the room. Trying to get your last, last components in. The more you zoom in, the slower you have to go, but the more um, sensitive and accurate you can be. Always good to remember those navigation shortcuts for zooming in and out. Yes. I think like reality TV, creative classes, You'll be surprised by how much growth there is in the season. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not showing you the simple stuff 